I'm Joshua Bardwell, and yeah, you're going to learn something today. At least I hope you do. Uh, today we're talking about motors. Everybody and their brother seems to be coming out with a new 2300 or 2400 size motor. And I have been wondering, is this all just marketing hype or is there really something to it? And I'm starting to figure out the answer and I'm going to tell you what I found out. Whenever manufacturers come out with a new product and one of the specifications is just one number bigger than the last one, I get a little bit suspicious. And when I saw this new crop of 2300 series and even 2400 series motors, my first thought was that it's just marketing hype, right? A newer, bigger motor must be better. We can charge you more money for it. Everybody's going to rush out and try and buy it, put it on their copter and go faster. That doesn't mean it's necessarily good. And I did an interview with Ryan Harrell, Quad McFly, and I asked him, is this all just a bunch of BS and hype? And you can watch that interview. I'll put a link in the upper right. But his response essentially was, it's not necessarily just hype. And that means I, I was about to dismiss these motors out of hand just based on my own incredulity. But after the interview with him, I said, maybe it's worth a try. And I put some of them on a copter and I've been flying them. The specific motors I've been flying are the LD Power FR2305 Sword is the brand name they're using. Thanks to LD Power for sending those to me. Now, normally this is the point where we would go to the bench and I would show you the motors, but I don't actually have a set of them to show you anymore. I gave one, I was sent two sets of motors and I gave one away to a person whose opinion I trust because I wanted to get a second opinion on them. And then I flew them for a while and I'm going to tell you about my experience with them. And then I gave them away to a different person whose opinion I trust. And that immediately tells you something that you need to know about the motors, which is like I wasn't wholeheartedly sold on them. If I had been wholeheartedly sold on them, I wouldn't have given them away. And I'd be showing them to you right now. These motors come with uh, solder on tabs for the motor wires instead of motor wires. And people, I think, have a love-hate relationship with these. For somebody like me who is moving the motors around a lot or who maybe is constantly swapping motors on the copter, this was really nice. It's especially nice because sometimes I'll solder a motor to an ESC on the arm of the copter and then maybe later I want to move the motor over or I want to swap the ESCs out for a foreign one ESC. And once you've cut the motor wires, you're kind of committed. This gives you the option to very easily change the motor wires to whatever situation you need the motor to be in uh, without having, eventually you cut the motor wires short enough that you're kind of just screwed and the motor's no good anymore. You don't have to worry about with these, with these motors. On the other hand, if you're the kind of person who just puts the motor on the copter and hardly ever changes it, this may not be much of a benefit for, fit for you. And in fact, it's a little bit of a hassle because, well, you have to make two solder joints instead of one every time you solder the motor to the ESC. You have to cut the motor wires to the right length, strip them, solder them. It's just twice as much work as it would be if the motor had traditional wires. Everybody's going to change a motor eventually, though, and it is also nice to not have to unwrap your ESC when you go to change out the motor because you can just desolder these pads here. It also gives you the flexibility to use a thicker motor wire uh, if you want to, and that might not be a bad idea because these definitely are some amp-hungry motors. Another really cool thing about this motor is that it comes with a molded-in nut on the top and it comes with a wrench that fits that nut, although obviously it's just a standard size. You could use a wrench that you've got. The, but the wrench that it comes with is very thin and it's designed to slip under the prop nut so that you can easily get a grip on the motor to take the prop nut off. And if you're the kind of person who sometimes struggles to hold the motor with your hands while you're trying to get the tight uh, prop nut off, this is a real blessing. I never had problems getting my nuts off I never had problems getting the nuts off of these motors uh, without the wrench, but if you're the kind of person who really wants to crank down on it, this is a thing that you can do. The motors come with active cooling. These fins up here are designed to, what, what basically happens with motors with active cooling is these fins sling the air outwards. Sometimes the fins are directional, which is the case here. These are designed to work when the motor spins one way, but they don't work as well when the motor spins the other way. Or if you look at the Brother Hobby Tornado motors, they have straight fins so the motors can spin either direction. And basically what happens is that the air is slung outwards due to centrifugal force, which creates a negative pressure area here at the top of the motor and air is actively drawn up and through the windings and out again. Uh, and that's how that works. Now, these motors are directional, 
And that's a thing I don't like about them. I realize this is one of my personal quirks. I hate clockwise, counterclockwise motors. I just want all my motors to have standard threads and I'll just use nylock nuts and that's how I'll keep them from loosening up in a crash. That's how I've never had a problem with that on a copter where I've done that. However, I do acknowledge that having clockwise and counterclockwise motors may be better for people like racers who just absolutely need as much insurance as possible against a prop coming loose. I'm just freaking annoyed that I can oh, sometimes don't remember and I'm tightening the nut when I mean to be loosening it. And then I have to, when I find a replacement nut, I have to find a left-handed one or a right-handed one. I just want all my nuts to be the same. Another cool feature of these motors is that they provided protection to keep the screws from touching the windings. Now there's a common mistake people make is they use screws that are too long and the screw goes up and it contacts the windings and the motor gets super hot and it can damage the motor or damage your battery. It's a bad scene. LD Power has put, you can kind of see it right here. They've put a protective, I think it's a, it's a circuit board maybe. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but it's a protective piece of material and it goes under the screw holes so that if your screw is a little bit too long, it will not actually make electrical contact with the winding. And that's a really nice touch. Before I give you my impression of these motors, let me just show you some flight footage. This is footage that I posted on my channel before, but I'll just give you a brief look at it now. You can see how these motors perform. In short, these motors freaking rip, okay? In terms of power, they're insane, okay? But that's not unique. There's lots of motors out there with insane power. Like for example, on the Legero 5 inch, I've got Brother Hobby Returner R3 motors and they freaking rip too. So simply saying that these motors rip is not enough by itself to recommend, recommend them. What is it that I think separates these motors from other motors? What kind of characteristics would you want if you were to get these motors? I think the defining characteristic of these motors is that they have a really smooth and linear throttle curve. When I did that interview with Quad McFly, he talked about motors having different throttle curves and I kind of was scratching my head and going, I kind of don't know what he's talking about there. Uh, but I feel like having put that idea in my mind, every time I fly a new motor, I'm thinking about the throttle curve and, and I've kind of figured out what he means. Let me give you an example. You've just done a big power loop or you've punched out way into the sky and now you're falling, right? And you're going to catch yourself before you hit the ground, okay? You, maybe you just need to bump the throttle a little bit to get that fine control to have just enough throttle to catch yourself as, before you hit the ground. Or maybe you need to you really get on the throttle because if you, don't, if you don't get enough throttle in there, you're going to not have the thrust and you're going to hit the ground. A motor with a very linear throttle curve is going to have a smooth and predictable response across the throttle, whereas a motor with a nonlinear curve is going to surprise you. When I flew the Legero with the Returner R3s, one of the things I noticed was that I would, I would bank over into a sharp turn, and as you probably know, if you fly quads, when you bank over, you got to raise the throttle to make up for it. And I would bank over and I would raise the throttle, but I would surprise myself with how much thrust I got. 
It was like there was Expo on the throttle, but it wasn't Expo on the throttle. It was Expo in the motors. Another example uh, or analogy I like to make is if you've ever driven a car with a massive turbocharger, at the bottom, at the low RPMs, you hit the gas and the car doesn't really, and then all of a sudden the turbo kicks in, and you're blown away, right? I think these motors are more like a car with a great big supercharger or, or a, a big like a V8 engine where there's good torquey power throughout the whole rev band as opposed to a case where down at the bottom you don't have a lot and then suddenly you get surprised with this rip your face off power at the top end. The question that we have to look into when we talk about motors in this class and really any ultra high performance motor is how efficient is it? How many amps does it pull? Um, motors like this have been shown to pull 40, 45, even 50 amps on the bench. And we know that the motor is gonna, or the prop is gonna unload in the air and not pull that many amps in reality. If it was pulling 50 amps, your battery would be, you can't, oh, there's not a battery made, not a 1300 or 1500 size battery that can really deliver 200 amps. So it's a good thing they don't pull that in the air, but they don't unload that much. And I think realistically, I was easily breaking 90 or 100 amps every time I punched out with these motors. And in fact, I killed a battery with these motors. Uh, I thought at first that the battery wasn't fully charged. Like I put the battery on the quad, I took off, I started flying and like 10 seconds into the flight, I was at like 15 volts. And I thought, did I not charge this battery? And I backed off the throttle and the battery recovered and I kept flying. And when I was done, I landed and the battery was like 12.8 volts. And, uh, and it smelled a little bit fruity, which means that the electrolyte in the battery had come through the lining and it was coming out. And I left that battery in the driveway for a little while before I, yeah. So these motors, they suck amps and you need great batteries to fly these motors. You're not gonna be flying this on like my Infinity batteries, which granted, they're not brand new. They have 30 or 40 cycles on them. Okay, fine. They still perform okay with my QAVR, with my Rotor Geeks motors uh, on them. Uh, these ones, no, no, they were not happy. And, uh, but the really good batteries, like the Thunder Powers, the True Powers, Tattoo R-Line, you need quality batteries if you're gonna run these. They will pull 90 or 100 amps. Granted, my quadcopter is not the lightest. If you're running an ultralight 400 gram all up with the battery racer, you're gonna do a little bit better in that respect. But as far as freestyle goes, you're gonna definitely have a heavier quad and you're gonna be pulling more amps. What I like about this motor for freestyle is that it's it's reasonably smooth and, and I really like the linear throttle curve. It made it really easy to do freestyle moves where I had to make subtle nuanced changes to the throttle position uh, and it gave me a certain confidence when doing those moves that I really liked. But all was not rosy in the world of these motors. I've talked about how they drew a lot of current and if you don't have great batteries, don't even bother getting these motors. But also the motors were not, they were a little rough. Like they felt really smooth. I don't know. They felt really smooth when I first got them. Uh, and Ryan Harrell, Quad McFly, talked in his test about how smooth they were. But, and this is not just me, but also the test pilots I gave them to noticed that after a few flights or I don't know, maybe something I didn't notice when I first got them, the bearings felt a little bit rough and I had real problems with heat, heat buildup on the motors. In fact, in one of the flights I posted, you could see white smoke coming and I don't, the windings showed no signs of damage and the motors didn't act effective in any way, but something was giving off smoke and the motors were really hot at the end of every flight. Hot enough that I wondered, hmm, should I, I, like I would never go and change the filtering on this quad because the motors were already hot enough that I'm worried. And I would feel really hesitant to like try to raise the degain to get rid of that last little bit of prop wash because the motors are already at the defaults hotter than I feel like they need to be. And it wasn't, I thought, well, maybe this one quad had problems with vibration, but this was true on not one, but three separate builds where I had these motors. On every single build, they were getting hot. We know they weren't overpropped because these are massive motors. You couldn't overprop these on five inch. There's no freaking way. So I don't know why they were hot, but I wonder if it goes back to a little bit of vibration from the motors, or maybe they just run hot. I just don't know. All that being said, would I recommend you buy these motors? Like, would I give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down? And although there were some things I didn't like about them, specifically the fact that they drew so many amps that they destroyed my batteries and, and that they ran kind of hot, 
Uh, overall, I do like them. I like the way they fly. I like the really linear throttle curve. They seem like reasonably robust motors in terms of, you know, being able to beat them up without destroying them. And I like the convenience features that they've got, like the solder on wires and the protection from uh, screws coming through. I would say if you're looking for a good freestyle motor, then maybe get the 2450 or even the 2300 kV version of this. Don't get the 2600 kV though. It's just too much for most batteries that we're going to be running. If you have extremely good batteries and you don't mind abusing them, go for the 2600 kV. But I still never did get them to not run hot. So yeah, maybe the lower kV version is better. They run 72 bucks for a set of four, which is $18 a, a motor, which is, that's expensive, but it's not like God tier, like 25 bucks a motor, like the rifle motors or the Cobra Champions. I don't even know how much they are. So they're expensive, but they're not super expensive and they're, they're decent motors for the price. That's gonna be all for this review of the LD Power Sword FR2305 motors. I got links down in the video description for where you can buy them. If you got any questions, definitely leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy flying.